Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Whether you're trying to install an application or you've got the application installed and you're having issues with it, one of the first places you're going to look when trying to troubleshoot that application is going to be the Event Viewer. So I'm going to go to the Start menu, type in Event Viewer, hit Enter. And I'm going to expand Windows Logs. You can see here's the application log. This is probably going to be the first place we're going to look if we're having problems with an application because this is where applications log to if they don't have their own service log, application or service log. So if I just expand this down a bit, we want to go through here and look for warnings, errors, anything like that, and see if it's associated with our particular application. And down here, we'll see the message. And a lot of times, this will tip us off as to exactly what the problem is and allow us to fix it. Or it could list some error that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us. But if it doesn't, but we know it's involved with the application that we're having problems with, it's a really good idea to highlight this particular area, copy it, and then open up a browser and paste it into something like Google and do a search on it. That is one of the top ways we're going to solve application issues is using the Internet as a tool to help us understand certain errors. Because if we run into an error, most likely someone else has already run into that error and spent some time troubleshooting it, figured it out, and posted their answer on the Internet. And I've found that when searching on the Internet, it's a great idea to copy and paste the exact error message. Don't try to put it in your own words. Use the exact error message because when people list a problem, they normally list the exact error message and then find a solution to it. So when you're searching in Google, it's the best way to find it. Other logs we may want to look at are security logs. Is there an authentication problem? And we're going to talk about auditing later on. But we may see an audit failure in here and we may want to take a look at it. Make sure that our application isn't having some sort of authentication issue, and that's what's causing the problem. Our setup log. If we're running an installer, we may want to look at our setup log to see if there are any errors in here that can tip us off as to what the problem is. Also, it's definitely worth looking at the system log when having application issues because it may be an actual system problem that's causing the application issue. And here's an error. If I just highlight it, you can see the processing of group policy failed. Windows could not obtain the domain controller. So uh, this is just one example. This could be a problem. Maybe we're having a DNS problem, and our application depends on DNS. It could be intermittent. And maybe DNS is working right now, and that's why the application is working right now. But maybe we have an application error that happened at this exact same time. And that's a really good clue as to a system problem causing an application problem. We're going to talk about forwarding events actually in the next movie. Some applications have their own log that we can look in. For example, Media Center, just one example. If we're having problems with it, it might not necessarily log to the application log up here. It might log to this Media Center specific log. And sometimes when we install applications, that's when they create their own log in this application and service log section. As you can see, if I go to the application log, or one of these other logs that has a lot of events in it, it can be kind of difficult to go through it to try to find events that you need to troubleshoot an application problem. Well, we can filter this out pretty easily. If I just right-click on my application log, click on Filter Current Log. Here I can select when a particular event occurred. Oh, I only want to see events in the last 12 hours, the last 24 hours, last 30 days. Or I can assign a custom range if I'd like. I can set the event level. A lot of times if we're troubleshooting a problem, we don't want to see information messages. Only critical, warning, and error. We're already filtering by the uh, application event log because that's the one I right-clicked on. If I didn't right-click on it, then we'd need to select the log that we want to filter on. Event sources. This is what actually logs the particular event. This is a great way to narrow down what we're looking at. Say we're having a problem with the firewall. We may want to filter by all of the firewall event sources. 
and then we'll only see events that are logged by the firewall. And we can even get as specific as logging or filtering by specific event IDs. So if we found an event, let's say event ID 1001 from this particular event source, then we may want to try to figure out when this event started happening. So we'll type in that particular event ID with that event source, click OK, and then it'll filter out everything but that particular event. And we can see, hey, oh, this started a week ago. You know, what happened a week ago that might have caused this particular problem? We can also filter by users and computers. Once we're done, click OK, and there it is. It filtered it out. There weren't any particular events that met this criteria, so it's not showing me any. But if there were, it would just list those. Now let's take a look at custom views. If we have an application that we're constantly looking at, or a set of event sources that we're constantly looking at, then we may want to create a custom view so that we can just go to it and it automatically filters out what we need. For example, administrative events. This is a default one. This is going to show us warnings and errors. So it's going to filter out all the, all the informational messages. So this just gets to what we want to see if we're having a problem. To create a custom view, I can just right click on it, click on create custom view. Here's where I select what I want to filter on, similar to what we just saw with the filter. So for this example, Let's say I want to do my application log. And if I want to filter on a certain event source, let's say I want action queue, all of these. Click OK. Now we're going to give it a name. Let's say my custom view. Click OK, and there it is. So now, anytime we wanted to see those particular events, we could just go to this particular My Custom View, and it would show us only those particular events.